Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of Stargate Brood War Remaster. Today it's gonna be Rush and Hero here on Polypoid for us. Another RGB replay. Top right, it's gonna be Rush. Guess what? He's yellow and he's Terran. And the top left, it's gonna be Hero. An incredible Zerg player. Highest level of StarCraft today from RJB. Check him out. YouTube.com slash at RJB underscore TV. Queen's watching. Best is watching. With zero APM in this early stage of this ZVT for you. The most popular matchup on my channel, I feel like. Man, last week we had a lot of fairly unknown Brood War players. And man, did they step up. So if you skipped those because you're like, hmm, who is Mihu? Who is Yabsab? Who is, uh, who was it? Who was it today? Anyway, if you didn't recognize the name and you skipped it, go watch it, man. I promise it is worth your while. So, ZVT here on Polypoid, a giant four-player map. Terra the Overlord moving out, saying hello to the Ursodon. Who is hurt, because sometimes he can block expansions and need an SCV to kill it. Or a drone to kill it. Anywho. Barracks coming up inside the main base. No proxies here today from Rush. And Hero is going for a hatch first play. At around, you know, 11 or 12 supply. Yep, 12 supply. Throwing down a hatch. Very, very good. SCV scouting. What up, Steve? Hope everything is A-OK. -okay. Hope you don't die to Zerglings, because that would be very, very sad. Let's see, what's going on here? Oh, yeah, I saw The Mummy, the 1999 movie with Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weiss or Weiss, not sure how to say her name entirely. Uh, in theaters, it's a re-release. Apparently, they are releasing a lot of 99 movies in theaters these days. I'm waiting for... Wait, was the Matrix 1999? Anyway, Phantom Menace is in theaters right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I cannot wait until the Matrix shows up in theaters. Anyway. Yeah, my review for The Mummy is as Rush expands. So, one Rex expand here. No gas. And a macro hatch, a macro hatch before gas, and is there gas steal here from Rush? Okay, very good. I don't think we see gas steals in this matchup very often. Anyway, the mummy was a ton of fun. The pacing is so good. Just moving on from one set piece to the other, I kind of yeah, it was like really, really well edited. And yeah, basically an original story. Hey, oh, sorry, Steve. You got killed by a drone. That is certainly an ignominious death, if you ask me. Anyway. The Mummy from 1999. Lots of good action. A little bit of romance. Some good morals in there. Ah, <laughs> uh, 99. What a time. How old was I in 1999? Uh, I want to say 16. So 16-year-old in 1999. Good time to be 16, I would say. Good time to be anybody, honestly. All right, man. So these slowlings are like, what's up? And the SCVs are body blocking and the Marines are like, no, nah, I don't think so. I mean, sure, a couple of Marines died, absolutely. But like, I don't know if that was worth it at all. didn't actually take the gas at the main base. Went for the gas at the natural base instead. Interesting. Interesting, interesting play there. So first under gas is going to lair. Metabolic boost is coming up after that, etc., etc. We're going to see some mutalisks here. And Engineering Bay is working on a plus one attack upgrade here. So, all right, Rush with an Academy 2. So it looks like he's going to open up some marine medic stuff. Maybe a couple fire bats if he's feeling frisky, which he probably should feel frisky here. What do we got? Anything crazy on the Zerg side of things? Not really. This macro hatch indicates we're probably going to go for nine mutas, though, right? 
We're gonna throw down a spire. Look at that gas. Oh, that gas lining up so nicely from Hero. Another SCV down. So two SCVs have died to scouting. Before it sees the spire come up, but like, come on. Come on. Yeah, so Rax Rax, here goes everything from Rush. Let's see when a third base is come, gonna come up from the Zerg player though. Possibly after the Mutas are on the way, they can kind of defend that third base. Third base is down here, kind of traditionally, if you're gonna do that here on Polypoid. Well, you can throw a third base here too if you want. But if you want the gas, I mean, this bottom left corner is probably the place to go if you're a hero. Bunker at the front. He's like, man, you showed up with some lings early, so might as well have a bunker at the front here. Stim getting researched. More and more racks coming in. And yeah, see, this ling scouts out this position to see if it's safe. And then our drone buddy shows up. Eventually. No? Okay, we're just sent links down here to check this corner for, I guess, proxy starports or something. That could be an option. Proxy starport for some secret wraiths or secret dropships would be pretty hot, but no. Double column sat. We're going to see some scans coming in here pretty darn quickly out of Rush, who has taken second place in an ASL. Pretty great player. Wings. There it is. There's your nine mutas, right? Because you need the extra larva from this third hatch to go for the nine mutalisks. So there's a scan, and the scan says, Behold, you're getting a Hydralisk Den, and all of your larvae are being used with something. So let's start throwing up some turrets, guys. Yeah, there you go. We know what's up. We know this timing. We saw the timing of the lair popping, so we know the timing for the Mutalisks. Very standard stuff here. About, you know, six and a half, seven minutes. Queen's Nest. Two base Queen's Nest. And Hydra Den. Whoa. Scans the natural. Sees more creep colonies coming up here. Really worried about some big, massive marine push out. Oh, these mutas got behind this mineral line. A little bit dangerous for y'all back there. Fairly injured, but nothing too bad here. There you go. Picking off marines that are splitting off from the group. Couple lings here too. I'm not sure they're gonna work together or not. Yeah, lurker aspect coming in, hive coming in at seven minutes. A 7:30 hive. Is this crazy Zerg? Is this hero trying to tech real fast up to ultralisks? Trying to use these sunkens to stay alive in the meantime. I mean, four sunkens seems like a lot, but if you're not planning on having a ton, then four sunkens is gonna help kind of deal with the fact you're not gonna have a lot of stuff. Fourth base is coming up bottom left, but again, not at not until this hive got started. Hydras are wandering down this way with other speed upgrade. Look at them go. <laughs> They're so slow with other speed upgrade. Uh, and top of the ramp, and there's the scan, and the guys are like, oh my gosh, if we get there soon enough, we can stop these lurkers from being at the top of the ramp. This one's got to block the ramp. You have to turn into a lurker and block the ramp. There you go. There are not enough. I don't know if there's enough there to stop this. He's using this high ground pretty ably, though. Not too shabby. These Zerglings are like, Bleh. That's what they say. They say, Bleh. Yeah, so I mean, yep. So Lurker's top of the ramp, not breakable, unless you have science vessels or drop ships or siege tanks, of which uh, I don't know if we have any of those. Starport is coming in. Uh, two starports, normal stuff. To file around. Sub nine minute start on that defiler round is hot. Adrenal would be a good upgrade to get. Falcon's a big fan of Adrenal. Man, it should be sponsored by Adrenal Glands. I talk so much positive stuff about that upgrade, man, because it's insanely good. I think it's like, honestly, I think it might be better than Stim. Although, I don't know. Stim also increases speed. <laughs> Yeah, man, if Adrenal gave Lings an extra speed level and increased their damage output, yeah, that'd be bonkers. That's what Stim does, though, right? Stim increases your speed and your damage output, but also hurts you, so that's the trade-off. If Zerglings could do that, I think they'd take that trade. Pretty much any day of the week here. Consumes on the way. I mean, I don't really like what I'm seeing from Hero here. 
He's been allowed to get up to three bases. He's got a Nidus Canal to defend this third base as necessary. You're just not getting up this ramp without a Radiate. And there's not a Science Facility yet. So, hmm, third base coming up from Rush. I like that from him. Let's see if Hero can bother to get a fourth base down here at the natural of the bottom left spawn. That'd be pretty cool from him. That loading up sound? Did I just hear? No, we do not have. No, we don't have Overlord Transport. I'm hallucinating is all. That's it. That's all I'm doing. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? What is this throwing up? Three additional factories at 1040, Rush. What are you doing? I'm, just, I'm transitioning to Mech Falcon. Don't worry about it, man. Dude, Spider Mine's getting researched. Double science facility. These Marines have plus one, plus one, and stim, and range, and there's medic support, and there's science vessels coming in. Everything about this screams SK Terran, and then Rush is like, nah, at 11 minutes, I'm just going to start making a bunch of mech. Don't worry about it. Ultraless Cavern coming in. Adrenal done for the Lings. Lurkers look like they're setting up to get a fourth base in this bottom left here. New Heights Carapace is now on the way. Man, I don't know. When is Hero going to sniff this out? I think is the question that I have for him right now. When is he going to figure out what's going on here? Because uh, if he doesn't, I, don't, I really don't feel good about this. Like, we just know that Ling Ultra is not particularly good against mech. It's not great against 27 siege tanks. Unless you're dropping, which maybe we could see drops coming in. So I'm not going to shut it down here. But basically what Hero's trying to do here is directly counter an SK Terraning Terran. And these Vultures are like, nah, man. SK Terran is the time of the past. We are mecking it here, friends. Look at him getting a fourth base. He feels so confident... In holding a fourth base against this nice plague, against this four basing Zerg. Dude, a mecking Terran being on equal base count to a Zerg player is death for the Zerg every single time. And the reason we've seen mech transitions not work in this matchup over the last couple years has been that Zerg players sniff it out, hunt it out, attack at a time when the Terran player is not ready for this. Or the Zerg player is not ready for it. No, the Terran player is not ready for the counter, right? Terran player is not ready for the attack by the Zerg, and then everything dies. There's this little window where they don't quite have enough stuff. But he kind of went hard for it. Went for plus one, plus one, range, stim, medics, science vessels. He kind of had everything. If there was going to be a temp tier, if there was going to be an attempt... Oh my gosh, the Ling Massacre. One Vulture died for like 20 Zerglings there. That's horrendous. Yeah, he just leaned hard enough in the SK Terran that I think Hero totally bought it. So there's your scan. He sees the Sunken, sees the Lings, sees the Defilers, and says, Okay, you know what? I'm pretty good with all of this from my Terran perspective. And as we've seen, basically what makes this work for Zerg is either disrupting this before we get into mech, or dropping or spawn broodlings with like the support of hydras we've seen that work on the channel that's some of the most amazing versus mech games that i've seen from zerg have been where they've gone for hydra queen it's just like mass hydra with queen support basically you just use the queens to spawn broodling the tanks and then the hydras come in and clear everything else up the goliaths the vultures the spider mines all of it it's kind of a neat strategy I'm not seeing Hero do this. Hero's getting anabolic synthesis. Hero is working on ventral sacks. So he's going for drops. So that's going to be big. If you're trying to mech here... Is this another base? No, but this is... Dude, Rush is macroing like a god right now. And he's mecking too. Siege tanks are rolling off the line here. Do they have any upgrades yet? They got plus one, sure. Why do you continue to send Lings into this? What, Hero, what are we trying to accomplish here, friend? Why are we running Zerglings into this Vulture Ball? That's not going to work. That's never going to work. 
I guess maybe he's there to clear out spider mines with those lings, and that's fine and everything, but... Oh, look at this. Look at this drop getting sniffed out. And just getting absolutely rebuffed. He was trying to drop it in here, but I, I don't... I do not know what Rush smelled or saw. Maybe this barracks, or maybe this barracks? That's the th great thing about transitioning into factories and mech here is that you've got barracks floating all over the place. An engineering base, just keeping an eye on what the Zerg player is doing. And the Zerg player is not making mutas. The Zerg player is not making hydras, although they maybe should. And there's a drop down here in the fourth base, irradiating the defilers immediately. Dark Swarm does get up inside the mineral line. And there is a lurker inside here as well, but it got irradiated. So nice shutdown here from Rush. I do appreciate that Hero is trying drops. He should continue to try them, in my opinion. But wow. All right, so these Ling, oh man, plaguing the SCVs and then sending in the Lings. Hero thought the drop was done, but it was not. Ah, Lings, stay inside, stay inside the Dark Swarm, guys. Okay, nope, I guess not. Why are we sending Lings running in here? Look at how many tanks there are at plus one, plus one. And yes, Hero has researched Burrow. So two Lings burrowed in the bottom right base. Six Ultralisks on the way. The Ultralisk Cavern was started a while ago. But I think now they have Chitinous Plating. They've got Anabolic Synthesis. They are ready for battle and to be picked up by an Overlord. Holy smokes. All right. Very, very good. Sending in lings to draw the fire and explode spider mines. Better than a ling die to a spider mine than an ultralisk. That is certainly the case. And here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Unloading ultralisks on top of the tanks. Dematrixing the tanks helps them to survive a little bit longer than usual. But are there too many tanks here? I feel like there are, even with Dark Swarm. Uh, oh my gosh, they could have killed that Ultralisk so easily before the Dark Swarm popped. Okay, very good, very good. Very good hold here by Rush. So many Ultralisks died. And he didn't lose a base. Just a few tanks, a few marines, maybe a couple SCVs and a goliath. I feel like Rush came out ahead on that engagement. And, ah. So while I was not looking, those two lings popped up, did some damage, and were killed. Yeah. How many tanks went down? None? Good heavens, these tanks. Okay, well, Rush is doing great, man. He's 190 supply to 150 supply for the Zerg player. Ah, Lings get up in this base. Dark Swarm trying to keep those drones alive. Does keep some of them from dying. 73 SCVs to 60 drones here. I mean, this is just Rush being like, yeah, I'm casually on five bases. Don't mind me. Okay, but stop trying to run ultra. Oh my gosh, I think one tank died there for two ultras. This is the kind of trading that Rush can afford to do. And yeah, like this base over here is up too, but we basically kind of split the map in, ha map in half at this point. Lane, Adrenalings, man. Do they have plus two attack yet? They do. They got plus two, plus threes on the way. It's some ways away though. And Ling's jumping on top of these SCVs, causing all sorts of problems, and then burrowing in again. But there's got to be energy. Yeah, there's energy for a commsat here. Did Rush not pay attention? Was he not actually looking at the screen when these Ling's burrowed in? That's the trick about burrowing lings, is sometimes you can trick your opponent into not realizing that they're there because they're doing something else when they burrow. It's hard to keep track of. So at this stage, I mean, I guess this is an, this is an extra base for Hero. So he has one base up on the Terran, but oh no, this base exists, never mind. Well, it's lifted, so it doesn't exist anymore. Drop, Vulture drop in the main base, several drones going down here. Worker count was a healthy 70 or so, but that is six, seven, eight, nine drones. The drones on gas going down are huge. Priority targets here too. Sometimes players forget to replace those ones on the gas. 
60 workers now. It's like 10 or 12 of them down. I love the Ultralisks fighting against these Vultures. Well, not from a Vulture perspective, though. That's pretty sad stuff, and they get absolutely destroyed. Yo! Ultras running up into this base. Good Sim City. The tanks are kind of protected here a little bit, at least. Ultras running in very quickly, mowing down some tanks here. But man, three Ultras died for like three tanks. Again, a good trade for Rush. That's the whole point of Max. Spider Mine catching that Ultralisk. Marines in the open field against Ultras. Not a good idea unless you have, you know, like 20 Marines to. One Ultralisk. Spider Mine again. Nice connection. And yeah, we're on even base here, guys. Against a mecking Terran player. A hero needs to kill a base or take the 12 o'clock or the 6 o'clock. And maybe try to outlast. But man, Rush's mech is so, so cost efficient right now. Every Terran player is like, why doesn't every Terran player just do mech? It's like, well, it's hard to get away with. But yeah, if you can get into an even base count against a Zerg player and mech, you're fine. Honestly, this is incredible stuff. Hero has entirely gone away from the dropping, too. By the way, in case you're wondering about that. Like, that is just D-Matrix each tank again. Ah! Things actually do overwhelm this high ground base. This has been the worst base to defend. Oh, my spider mine connection. Definitely the worst base for defending here. Does pick up the lings in that overlord. Maybe try to drop them in this base. But there's like a hundred siege tanks, man. Dude, this attempt to overwhelm here. I love this from Hero. Dark swarming the entrance. Getting lings on top of these tanks. Getting all oh, lings on top of the tanks on the top of the ramp. But the splash damage is still causing some problems here. Even inside the Dark Swarm, that's the power of the Siege Tank, man. Marines are helpless inside the Dark Swarm, not the Siege Tanks. That is why the Siege Tanks are the big boys here. And yeah, looks like it's a hold. So, I mean, this base did not get held. Some reinforcements had to come down and deal with it. I love the burrowed lings inside this Dark Swarm. You guys are very cute. 170 to 154 supply. Rush is up. Another attempt to swarm on in here. 65 workers means you can kind of just swarm a bunch. Man, it's just such a long way to go. And a lot of the tanks relocated down to the bottom right. So in the top right, it's a little bit sparse and scarce here. Lings and Ultras jumping on top of these tanks like they... The tanks owe them money or something. Good grief. Ling jumping on top of another D-Matrix tank. The science vessel's been putting in some work here. Not a lot of Scourge flying around. Irradiated Ultralisk inside your production dies pretty easily because of the Irradiate and the Siege Tank fire. <laughs> Ling's trying to drag some Spider Mines into these tanks. No! The Ling's die before they trigger the Spider Mines fully and the tanks live. They saw their lives flash before their eyes there. This tank positioning, man. Three plus three Siege Tanks. The range, the sheer power of these tanks. Yeah, I think at this point, Rush is just like, I'm totally fine with this. I'm at 68 SCVs. I've got half the map. I just have to make sure the Zerg player doesn't expand here or here. Yeah, you know what? You can have this base. Go for it, dude. Like, I'm not sure if this is even something that Rush is worrying about or should be worrying about. Because, yeah, it's... Okay, more drops. I was going to say, Hero seems to be forgetting the drops little bit, but Rush is like, yeah, I know it can kill me. Drops, so let's get a bunch of turrets up. Let's make sure we have spider mines so if you unload in this position, spider mines are going to kill you too. But big drop here. Not as powerful as a recall, I'm going to say. Zerg players are wishing they had a recall about now. God, but dropping with the Dark Swarm from Hero is so sick. That is such a cool maneuver, man. Ultra's not getting up that ramp. And it's just been Hero's complete inability, complete inability to kill any of these bases today. He hasn't killed a single Terran base. He's forced to lift off once. Now, Vulture's getting in here, sniping more of these drones, knocking Hero back under 60 workers again. Can't be happy about that at all. There's a dropship back here. I guess there were some more drops of some kind. The dropship is alive. Nobody seems to be interested in killing it. There aren't, again, a lot of Scourge about. 
I love these vultures. Uh, they're very brave. They're going to try to take down this hatchery all by themselves. Yeah, the drops aren't particularly working. God, Drillings do wipe out those vultures quite nicely. So yeah, fully upgraded. 3-3 three, three Cracklings here. With the Ultralisks too. Absolutely crazy stuff here. Oh gosh, Siege Tank's firing in. Uh, the o Overlord's getting irradiated. It kind of puts it a timer on them to when they need to unload. And they do. And uh, some again, some tanks are dying, but I'm just not sure the number of Ultralisks that are dying are worth it here. This is actually a nice engagement from Hero. He might once again force a liftoff on this high ground base down at the bottom right for Rush. Can't feel good about that if you're Rush. But more tanks come in. You know what? They're going to save it too. They're going to save it. Very nice. Ultras took a ton of damage there. Ultras rolling into spider mines, just sort of eating them. And then into the tank and dead. These siege tanks are not doing a fantastic job of killing these ultras before they get on top of them, but they're doing a pretty good job of killing them as the ultralisks get on top of them. It's 170 to 102 supply. Yeah, this is just, man, every Terran player is like, this is a crushing by Rush. A crushing by Rush. Spider Mind wipes out a Filer. That is a good, good feeling for sure. And finally, taking this 12 o'clock base is Hero. Fully scouted. I'm really surprised that Hero hasn't sent up like three Vultures to shut this thing down. Or maybe even one would be enough to shut it down at the moment. Because he's got full vision on it. That's what that whole barracks is for, guys. But yeah, purple Zerg. Classic, classic color here. Yellow Terran. A very smart color for Terran. Not a classic color for Terran, but a good color nevertheless. Dude. I love that we're incorporating science vessels into this mech. It's awesome. It's not something we see every time with a mecking Terran, although in the last couple mech games I've cast, it has definitely been at least a little bit of science vessel stuff here. Hey, there we go. A vulture showed up. A bunch of vultures showed up. Maybe attack the drones there. There you go. A couple drones die. Ultralisk shows in and says, Daddy's home. And all the vultures are like, but we can kill... No, you cannot. Like... That's the thing, though. Ultral is tanking the damage while the Lings do the damage. That is the symbiotic relationship of all time. Yeah, so Rush takes this high ground base and the six o'clock base. No, he doesn't. That's a command, not a command center down there. That's a barracks. So Hero continuing to remax here. He's at 72 drones. He's down 196 to 153 supply. He doesn't have much of a bank, but Rush doesn't have much of a bank either. Okay, Scourge are around. Science vessels that make it this deep into Zerg territory are 100%. 100% gonna catch some Scourge. Or likely to. This this one totally didn't. But yeah, it's bases killed. I mean, yeah, in all fairness, none of the bases of the Zerg player have died today either. It's a very weird 28 minute game where no bases have died. None. It's been a ton of battles out in the middle of the map. Some of the bases are under attack, but none of them have actually gone down yet. I think part of, I mean, a large part of that fact is due to the fact that command centers can lift. I might have jinxed it, though, for Hero. This base looks like it's in a lot of trouble. This is Hero really trying to save this thing. He's dropping Ultralisks out of these overlords like a madman. Are there enough? Uh, this is kind of working out from Hero. I sort of like it for him. <laughs> so many Ultras have died though, man. It is tough. It is a really, really tough look here. So Hero, trying to swing it. There is a drop. A one vulture drop at this base. This natural base of heroes. Yeah, man. It's just too many tanks. Hero is doing a pretty fantastic job of killing siege tanks today. I'm not going to... I'm really not going to wail on him for that. It's just it's economic at this stage. He's done a pretty good job of being 
I think, cost efficient enough to win this game, except for the fact that the Terran player is on equal base count to you. I guess that 12 o'clock base is the extra base that exists here, and that's kind of what's allowing Hero to stay in this game, despite being down 198 to 142 supply. Link's continuing to roll into these tanks. I guess there was a Goliath here a second ago. He's gone. Man, any time Adrenaline jump on top of a siege tank, you just know it's going to be a bad time for that tank. And this is the worst base to work at in the Kapulu sector right now. It's been under attack consistently since it was created. Overlord irradiated and killed. This is just more of the same. Lings and Ultras and Overlords and Drops and ugh, Spider Mines. Every Spider Mine that kills 10 Lings is just adding to that number where the Terran mech is incredibly cost efficient and the number of resources mined here today by the Terran don't need to be as much as if it was an SK Terraning situation. That's the big deal. Oh, he lost this hatch to what? Okay, we might have rewind and check that one out. Another big... Massive drop here. Dark Swarm's coming down here too, but again... I'm just looking at Ultra and Ling corpses is all I'm dealing with right now. But seriously, I want to know what killed that hatch. Because I missed it. 190 to 130 supply. Hero is no stranger to being down in this game. Not even close. Gosh, Spider Mine's once again connecting massively on Link. Oh, that Ultra list? Just no chance. None. No chance to live at all. If Siege Tanks can get here, they can simultaneously threaten this base, this base, and the natural. That'd be pretty big. There is a Nidus here, so reinforcements are possible. Rush is not really... He's made a move out today. He tried to kill this base, got pushed back. Hero is maybe going to push this attack back, too. D-Matrix Irradiate combos today have been pretty sick. But the Scourge combos are also pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah, and this 12 o'clock base is going to die again. Way too many siege tanks. I'm not sure Hero can handle losing this base again. But he's going to anyway, and that's it. Hero taps out, and Rush is our winner here. Okay, I need to rewind a little bit. My goodness, what just an insane transition into mech here as we're seeing on the super fast forward device right now. Okay, so this base exists at 28 minutes. This drop comes in. Oh, it's us, Siege Tank, and a Vulture killed this? No, that didn't happen. Okay, so we saw that. Right, we saw that Vulture go over there. I don't know, we're seeing little attacks come through here. These guys. No. Oh, they did! They barely got that. Holy cow. Seriously? There were ultras on those guys' butts. Those siege tank drivers were saying their prayers because they were dying. But they were following orders. And... Oh, man. Right as that tank dies, the hatch goes down and this guy goes down too. Big time. That was a big, 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 big play for Rush. That was crazy. Ah, see? Sunken killed the Ursodon because it was blocking the hatch. And that's it. And it's just like one major push out. This drop is great. One, one, one major push out here today. Killing the 12 o'clock base, everything. Because this is mined out, this is mined. Yeah, 12 o'clock base goes down. Again, kind of threatening this base. The natural base is in trouble too, and that's it. Hero taps. So, great transition. The cost effectiveness of this game in the Terran's favor is through the roof. 317,000 points, 292 there. We got Hero producing 1,200 Zerg units, only 700 for the Terran, and yeah, this is a three to one kill death ratio 
That is a more than a 3 to 1 kill death ratio here. Actually, maybe about... I can't do the maths. You know that, but my goodness. So yeah, outproducing the Terran by 2 to 1, getting killed 3 to 1. That's not going to do. 13 to 3 buildings raised here. Again, not really a big uh, thing when Zerg's involved. And outspending the Terran by 7,000 resources in 32 minutes. It's just not going to cut it. It probably is not going to cut it against SK Terran either. But especially not against Mech. Oh, oh. Holy Hannah. All right. Well, that was a great ZVT for you Terran fans. I mean, that is Mech. That is just kind of handling Hero. Hero went for the drops. He had Dark Swarms. He had Plagues. He was doing all sorts of great stuff, but... I just think the mech transition caught him off guard. Hero was not able to kill a base today. And that's all she wrote. I know that's kind of simplistic, but dude, you got to be able to kill a base, I think. That's how I feel about it anyway. But man, GG. GG. And that's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. If you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.